So the edge finder, or as it's more commonly called the wiggler, is a set that should look something like this. Um, I find old glasses cases very useful for storing things in because they're nice and secure. So we've got a holder and then we have various different attachments which can be added into it um, to take various different measurements. So they're all ball joints. So we quite simply undo the collar a little bit and we just gently ease the ball in and it will click into place. And as you can see, that gives us a nice free range of motion within the ball holder. Um, this particular one is quite a useful one. It's a, it's a little gauge holding device so we can put our little verdict gauge that we've got here. into the holder um, and as you can see that will then give us a nice free range of mo motion which we can clamp up nice and tight and then use to take um, measurements on our vice setup for example to make sure it's nice and square to the bed. This device when we have this setup like this we never run the machine obviously these are very expensive these little verdict gauges and we don't want to cause damage by smashing it into the work so this is with the machine switched off that's the only case all the rest of them are actually done with the mill running so the set comes with three little attachments uh, needles styluses call them what you will um, so we have the pointer which is more of an optical gauge it's used for uh, assessing the position of for example center punch marks um, you do it visually it's the least accurate of the devices that we have here um, but it's still quite a useful one and we'll show that in operation in a minute um, then we have the two real edge finders two options we have the ball type so we have a large ball at the top which goes in to the socket and underneath we have a slightly smaller diameter ball and next to it we have the disc type as it's called which again has the ball and as you can see down at the bottom here there's a little cylindrical what they call the disc element and that's the part that actually makes contact with the material. I'm going to show through using them both. Um, they both have their advantages, they both have their disadvantages. My favourite is always um, the round ball. It gives a much clearer indication, it's much more easy easier to set up um, and easier in operation. Main thing with these is keeping them nice and clean, making sure there's no rust forming on them so they're nice and free to move when they're in the holder. So the point affords us probably the least degree of accuracy we're going to get from a wiggler. None of these are super super high precision tooling um, and depending on your experience will depend upon how accurate they are in operation. However, the more you use them, the better you will become. So, quick talk about the setup. Um, what we've got here, I've got my um, pointer mounted in my wiggler holder. Um, and I am using the ER32 collet uh, assembly in the mill. Now, it's true to say you can put this in a three-jaw chuck. Important to remember that the three-jaw chuck is nowhere near as accurate as a proper collet. So any instance where you can mount one of these into a proper collet will give you much better repeatability of the task um, than if you start trying to use a three-jaw chuck. That will get you out in a pinch, and to be fair, using the pointer here is probably good enough. Um, but if we're actually using it for edge finding, I would always go to a collet for uh, better accuracy, better repeatability. So we've got it set up in the mill. What we're going to do now is turn it on and this is one of the few occasions where we expect you to get your hands in to the rotating piece of equipment. So one of the things you need to make sure you do is have sleeves up and out of the way so we've got nothing that could get caught on the actual spinning tool. Um, jewellery off and then we are ready to begin the operation. So I'm going to turn the mill on. I'm going to spin I'm going to be about 900-ish RPM, something like that. Having said that our pointer 
he's moving around quite freely. Um, now what we can do is we can use a little piece of metal and we can just go in and by holding that up against the shaft we can get the pin to now stop moving too erratically. Generally you'll find if you actually go with your fingers that you can actually feel the vibration we can get that down to what is a pretty stationary pin. And, and if we get right in and look, as far in as we can go with that, you see that the, the head of the pointer is now completely stationary. Now what that tells us is, because this is completely stationary in what is a very free moving holder, that it must be running exactly through to the quill of our milling machine, which means that this is perfectly, this pin here, is perfectly in line with the centre of the shaft that's running through the mill. So therefore the centre of any tool that we then go and put into the collet. It's then just a question of, by manipulating our controls, we can get it nice and close. line the pointer in as close as we dare and then we can by eye line up until we have it reasonably well visually aligned so this is a really a by eye tool um, but because it is spinning and because it is perfectly in line this will always be far more accurate than just trying to do that with a sense of drill um, or with a drill bit itself. So in terms of accuracy this is pretty low um, but in terms of accuracy compared to for example just using the drill bit this is considerably high. So that's the point. I'm just taking a look at the maths. Um, there's always maths, it's machining, come on. Um, so we have let's say our 20 millimeter piece of block here, we've got a piece of brass um, which we can see we've drawn out here. Um, length is unimportant. We've got a centre line, which is where we're ultimately attempting to find because in this scenario we're going to machine, um, let's say, a 6mm groove along the centre line. So 3mm on either side of the centre line. So, importantly, we need to find exactly dimensionally on our milling machine where this centre line is. So what we've done is we've mounted the ball in the holder and we've used the edge finder and we've located this position. So there is the ball mounted up against the side of the material. Um, it's in perfect alignment. We're confident and happy that that is now in an exact position. We now have to do the obvious maths. So we're going to measure our ball. And in this instance, and because this is quite an old set, this one is actually an imperial measurement and it comes out at a rather awkward um, diameter of 6.33 millimetres, which is a little bit clunky. It's nicer if it's whole numbers, but actually remember, you're dealing with a DRO, you've got a digital readout, so it doesn't really matter how complicated the numbers are. That tells us that the radius is 3.17 millimetres. So this point here, the centre of our axis of our milling machine, is exactly 3.17 millimetres from this edge. So if we advance the mill by 3.17 millimetres to this point, we are exactly on the edge. The centre of our tool will be on the edge. Then we only need to add an extra 10 millimetres of motion to bring the centre of the tool from the edge to the centre of the workpiece. If we then install our 6mm cutter, we can come along to this edge and we can happily cut our 6mm slot, knowing full well that we are exactly located on the very edge. So, the mass is fairly simple, but it is easy to get a little bit lost. When you first start using these devices, it's worthwhile, you don't need to draw a CAD sketch, but it's worthwhile just drawing your material, drawing a circle to represent your ball, putting the figures in and actually confirming that, as we've done on the end here, we need to move 3.17 millimetres and we need to move 10 millimetres, which gives us a total movement 
of 13.17 millimeters. All we need to do then is once we've found that edge, we can zero on that position and just using our digital readout, move 13.17 millimeters and we are exactly in the middle. Very, very useful just to get your head around the maths, just do a little quick sketch because it's just a, a, an idiot check. It's a confidence booster that you've got everything worked out before you start going in and doing a plunge cut or start um, milling out great chunks of material, which could well be in the wrong place. So we've got our wiggler in. We're now gonna turn the machine on. And as you can see, it's not in line. It's moving around all over the place. And I don't care. I'm gonna leave that. And what I will do is I will move the ball until it's in line with the piece of material so that we're going to get good contact. Now what I'm going to do is using my bed, I'm going to move the material until it starts coming to contact with the ball. Now what you might just be able to make out is the reflection of the workshop lights and that's giving us this sort of circular light pattern running round and round and round. Um, and that's really useful because that tells us that we've got movement of the ball, it's not lined up. As I now start to bring the material into contact with the ball, you notice now the movement of that light path is very much reduced. It's getting smaller and smaller until we get to the point where the reflection that we're getting from the lights is stationary. It appears to be making no more movement. Um, and that's a critical point because what that tells me is that we are perfectly aligned. This ball is now perfectly concentric to the shaft. It's not able to move around anymore. That means it's just touching because it's being held in position by the material. I am now in alignment with the edge of this material. I'm merely offset by the thickness of the ball. And we can see that, if I turn it a bit further, the ball runs along the side and spins off because I've gone too far. We'll go back. Bring the ball round. So we're not looking at perfect alignment because what we want to do is see that reflection of the lights go to the point where it's stationary, which is about there. And at that point, if I kill the machine, I can now, ideally you would do this with a micrometer, this is easier for you to see, we can measure the diameter of the ball, and we can then half that diameter, so from that point if I then half that diameter move across by three millimeters and a little bit and I will be then perfectly in line with that edge. Setting up and running the disc stylus is exactly the same as the ball. Um, as you can see we're now just looking at getting an edge on this slightly more constricted area where the top of the vice jaw here may actually interfere with the standard ball if we were to use that. So we swapped over to the disc. Um, first of all, one of the most notable things that you may see is there's really no reflection. So if I spin it up, 900,000 RPM, whereas before we had a, a nice little circle of lights with the top lights spun around in reflection, well, we don't have that, which is why my preference is for the ball. Um, when doing these kind of um, edge finding exercises. Nevertheless, exactly the same procedure applies. So, we're just going to wind our axis, bring in the work closer, and what you'll see is the movement will be reduced. Just a little bit of vibration now. And we go nice and slowly, we should get it to the point where there's no appreciable vibration on the head at all. So there it is now perfectly stationary. There's no movement on there at all. And what we're getting now is the quill of the milling machine axis 
is perfectly aligned with the axis of this little stylus that we've got in the wiggler and that stylus is touching the edge of the material which tells me that it is perfectly aligned exactly one disc radius away from that edge. Now when you first go to use a wiggler it is easier to look for that motion. That's really obvious and visual and if I'm honest with you it's generally plenty practical enough um, you're unlikely to be taking a critical cut directly um, off of that um, and in terms of centering position it's probably close enough but be aware to get to the point where it's doing this we actually have to go past that point of concentricity past that point of perfect alignment and we are losing just a tiny fraction of accuracy that said it's a perfectly acceptable method um, of finding an edge and given the radius of this particular tool it may well be as accurate as any other methodology but nevertheless that's the disc finder um, when you're using the wheel.